welcome friends to this uh, second session of our after bandara meeting uh, in which we evaluated this morning and i was very happy that so many of you found this event beneficial and helped you in your progress on the spiritual path all right we'll have a test now <laughs> whether you passed or not <laughs> test is very simple i'll first tell you a few more jokes <laughs> and then we will meditate and we'll see if we remember the jokes or the master <laughs> whoever can remember only jokes fails who can remember master passes and who can remember both the jokes and the master gets high marks <laughs> who can remember the master telling jokes will get super marks <laughs> so i have to refer to my notes again it's a new iphone gold let me start with something about doctors and pseudo doctors an engineer was unemployed for a long time he could not find a job so he decided to become a doctor he found doctors always have some job some practice so he found he opened a medical clinic and put up a sign which said get your treatment for 500 dollars if not treated get back 1000 dollars not only money back guarantee double the money back guarantee if i treat you 500 dollars if i can't i'll give you 1000 dollars one doctor real doctor said this is a good opportunity to earn some money from this guy so he says the doctor says i have lost taste in my mouth do you have any treatment for that engineer nurse please bring medicine from box number 22 and put three drops in the patient's mouth doctor this is gasoline <laughs> oh you got your taste back <laughs> <laughs> give me 500 <laughs> so he gets 500 dollars <laughs> then doctor gets very annoyed goes away and he says and this is terrible i should have recover my money at least so goes back doctor says i think i have lost my memory i cannot remember anything do you have any treatment for that engineer nurse please bring medicine from box 22 put three drops in the patient's mouth doctor but this gasoline again you got your memory back <laughs> anjani congratulations you got your memory back that will be another 500 okay. <laughs> now doctor has to recover 1000 back he decides he going to try something very different he says i think my eyesight has gone very weak you have any treatment for that then he says sorry i don't have any treatment if your eyesight is weak here is your $1000 back but this is 500 dollars your eyesight is back <laughs> okay i th- i thought that was interesting at least i didn't cry in it <laughs> okay now a us patrol agent catches an illegal man crossing the border from mexico he pulls him out from the bush where he was trying to hide and he says sorry you know the law you got to go back across the border right now the mexican man pleads with him no 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 senor i must stay in the usa please please help me the border patrol agent thinks to himself i am going to make it hard for him and he says okay i let you stay if you can use three words english words in one sentence the mexican man of course agrees 
the border patrol agent tells him the three words are green pink and yellow make a sentence now use them in one sentence mexican says hmm okay the phone it went green 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 i pink it up and says yellow <laughs> Four, <laughs> four Catholic men and a Catholic woman were having coffee in Saint Peter's Square. The first Catholic man tells his friends, "My son is a priest. When he walks into a room, everyone calls him father." The second Catholic man chirps, "My son is a bishop. When he walks into a room, people call him Your Grace." The third Catholic then says, "My son is a cardinal. When he enters the room, everyone bows their head and says, 'Your Eminence.'" The fourth Catholic man says very proudly, "My son is the Pope. When he walks into the room, the people call him 'Your Holiness.'" Since the lone Catholic woman was sipping her coffee in silence, it was her turn to speak. She says, "Well," she said, "I don't have a son. I have a daughter." I have a daughter, slim, tall, thirty-eight inches, DD bust, twenty-four waist, and height thirty-four hips. When she walks into a room, everybody says, "Oh my God!" <laughs> okay. <laughs> Enough for the tale. <laughs> Enough material for the test. now the master is remembered by our soul and the jokes are remembered by our mind the person who remembers god the lord masters the master power spiritual power is true home such kind those who remember that are known as gurmukhs Gurmukh means a follower of a guru, a follower of the truth, and those who follow their mind are called manmukhs. Manmukhs are those who follow their man or the mind. So, mind remembers things which are only related to the mind, and God is remembered by the soul. So, in this test we are going to do now, you are going to meditate, and as I said earlier. we will see if you only remember the jokes then you fail if you remember the the master and forget the jokes you pass if you remember the master telling you these jokes you get super marks so let's see let's close our eyes and go back to the third eye center behind the eyes and allow the mind to roam around and see where it goes where is drawn where is your soul drawn where is your attention drawn are you being dragged by the mind into something else or are you able, able to focus on the master are you able to recall events with the master stay in the center behind the eyes and relax in the chair and then recall keep your eyes closed till i count 5 1 2 3 4 open your eyes welcome back now we have to look at the test results How many of you remembered the jokes only? <laughs> only one out of so many. <laughs> How many remembered the master only? Very good. How many remembered the master telling the joke? Wow, you all passed. <laughs> Congratulations. The, this is just a way to remind us there are so many things that the mind gets absorbed in. but we have the power to pull our attention 
away from what the mind is thinking and draw it inside to ourselves. The only external thing that we have, which is identical to our real self and available at all levels, including physical level, is a perfect living master. It's an identical copy of the self because the awareness of that person is the same as totality of awareness inside us. So if we have to find an identical copy or a copy of the creator, it's sitting outside. And when you go inside, it's also an identical copy. When you go higher up, it's still an identical copy. When you go to the top, it's the same. It's only one. There's no difference. So that is why we have in our, uh, in our own consciousness the power to put attention on anything we like. If we are dragged away by a mind to do what the mind wants to do, how can we be so helpless that we have so much power in our soul, in our spirit, that we can overrule everything? We are the creative power. And how can we be dragged away by a mind? Therefore, we must build into ourselves that strength of our own soul, called the spiritual strength, the spiritual will that should be able to override the mind at any time. It does not mean don't use the mind. Use the mind but you direct the mind where you want to use it. You want to think of a particular thing, direct the mind to think only of that, nothing else. Meditation is not necessarily to close your eyes and sit and do it. It's a daily occurrence every time, 24-7 you can be meditating by using your spiritual awareness to override your mind. This test is an example how our mind can be diverted and our attention can be diverted wherever we like. Of course, in the beginning, when you want to use your spiritual will, you have to talk. You have to talk to yourself. The mind says, let me do it. You have to talk and say, no, that's also a word. Both I want to do it and the word no are both coming from the mind. You are using the mind for both purposes. You are allowing the mind to think on its own and do things and you are also using the mind to say no to it. But when you say no, it is some other power that is overriding the mind. You are using the mind and its will against itself and that only happens because the soul wants to assert itself. I am here, I am the consciousness, I am, I am the owner of everything and I own the mind and why is the mind trying to boss over me? This attitude that we can build continuously, day and night, every time we make so many decisions, all the time this awareness should be with us, that we have to develop the spiritual will to overcome the mind's will and use the mind. We should use our mind, use our senses, use our body. They're all given for us to use. They're not given to us that we be dragged by them. What is happening is they're dragging us around. The story of a Great master used to tell the story of a king who loved his daughter and wanted her to get married to another prince and live in a nice place in a royal style like she was accustomed to living. Somehow he went out and fell in love with the janitor of a low caste. And she was very, the king was very perturbed. And he said, look, she lost her whole lifestyle. She's living with that poor fellow. Poor fellow cleaning streets, cleaning houses. That poor fellow, what will he take care of my daughter? Very perturbed. But the daughter was in love with this cheapy, cheapy guy. But the worst thing was that she loved the cheapy guy and the cheapy guy, that poor fellow, did not even love her. He just took her as a wife and loved other women, prostitutes. He would go to one prostitute of another, and he had five prostitutes he used to go to. The life of that daughter of the king was miserable. This is our story. We are children of the Creator, living in spiritual style and spiritual palaces. We have lived that great life. We are supposed to live that great life at all times. And what did we do? 
we fell in life with this cheapy thing called mind. And we are following the mind. Mind doesn't love us. Mind loves things. In love, mind loves the five senses, the five prostitutes. The mind is being dragged. One prost prostitute drags the mind, it goes away. One sense drags us, we go there. The eyes drag us somewhere, we go there. The lustful thoughts come, we go there. The possessive things come, we go there. The angry th thoughts come, we go angry. That's what I, we are living our life with. Look at the purity of our consciousness, where it belonged. And how we ended up in this. It's better to get out of this mess. Because there is no real love here. We have to withdraw ourselves where we belong. And therefore, our true home, which is royal, regal, palatial, where we can really enjoy and appreciate true bliss, where we can enjoy what true nature of consciousness is, what love comes from, where it comes from, where true knowledge comes from. That's where we should be going back. So that is why the spiritual path is a means to reassert our real identity. This is not our identity. This is a borrowed identity and we think we are that just because we wanted to see a show and put on a costume to be a part of the show does not mean we become the show. It's temporary. Let's act according to the costume. We have to. That's why we came. But never lose sight of the fact we are actors wearing costumes. These are three powerful, beautiful, wonderful costumes. But they are costumes. The soul is covered with the costume of the mind. And the soul, which is pure consciousness, has gone into the thinking because the mind thinks. I am thinking. The self is thinking. Self need not think. Self knows everything. Why would it think? If the self is all-knowing, why would it think? Thinking is just to expand awareness into experience and to make it a different kind of experience. We take in the costume to be our own reality. And then top of that, the sense perceptions are the only means to go to know who we are. Sense perceptions are the only identity we have, another costume. And the physical body, that's the only reality. Sense perceptions are built into it. The mind is a function of the brain. And there's no independent thing. There's all physical stuff. The whole world is physical. It's only reality. We caught up in this. Okay, there's a claim some people are making. But there's a better way to check it out. Go within and find out if it is true or not. Find out these are costumes that we are covering ourselves with or not. So once you actually start the journey. I am not saying... Please go to Sachkhan tomorrow. I am saying go on the correct route. Go to the railroad station from where you can catch a train. Go to the airport where a plane can be taken. Go to the third eye center behind the eyes. Collect your attention there. You will be taken from there by your master. But you must check it out. You can't keep it merely as a good idea that we understood very well. It was very good. Intellectually, we grasp the whole thing. And then we don't do anything. This is a very experiential path. It is not a path of belief. Certainly not of blind belief. It's a path where you are indicated this is possible. Have a look. If you find what you're looking for, some signs are there, move forward. If you find more signs, more evidence of what you're looking for, move forward. It's scientific exploration of the self, of consciousness. And therefore, don't treat it as we went to a nice uh, uh, bandara and we had a good time, food was good. I remember six, in the 60s I came to this country to study in the university here and attended a few bandaras of the satsangis. They were satsangis of different masters from different, India. Most of them were from India. And they would say, we had a wonderful bandara. I said, really, how was it? Food was excellent. <laughs> The whole emphasis on Bandara was how good the food was. So what, what about meditation? Oh yeah, they said we should meditate re regularly. Is that the priority we give to a Bandara? Bandara is the Bandhar of the grace which we can adopt, which many of you experienced. In the personal interviews you, to me, you have told me how many 
experiences you had during one day. You can have the more experiences if you carry with you this whole simple truth. We all have access to our inner self and they start from behind the eyes at the third eye center. Put your attention there, even five minutes with great intensity, with the kind of joy which you got from the jokes, I say, <laughs> with the kind of enthusiasm and with the kind of passion that you have for something you really like to find out. If you place yourself behind the eyes five minutes in the morning when you get up, your whole day will be different. If you spend five minutes at night putting your attention there, your night will be different. Your day and night can change with five minutes. Out of 24 hours, people say you should give one-tenth of your time to meditation, one-tenth of your income to charity, one-tenth of this, share everything. And I am saying 10 minutes? Why am I reducing it from two and a half hours minimum requirement to 10 minutes? Because we are living in Kali Yuga. Iron Age. In Iron Age, we can't do what was done in previous yug yugas. The more we are distracted by modern civilization, more we are distracted by modern technology, more we are drawn outward, the more difficult it is becoming for us to go inside. So I am only saying, it is better to do five minutes. Of course, if you can do two and a half hours, great. If you can do eight hours, better. But we can't do that. So I, I am trying to be realistic. I am trying to be as realistic as possible in the circumstances in which we live. We have so much, our, our lives have become so busy. We are so busy with so many things. We have taken on responsibilities which never existed before. We have taken on so much and we, it's a, technology has brought us to high speed living. And therefore, more and more of our time has been tied up. So that is why I am saying, at least five minutes in the morning, five minutes at night, and you'll get results. But do it every day. Do not lose the momentum of it. Don't do it once a week. Don't say I'm catching up now for all the time that I missed out. It takes a very long time to catch up, but slowly building up every day. And watch out. If every day you have one small little new experience, you are making progress. Very little experience, you're making progress. The experience need not be an internal vision. Some people think the only test of spirituality is what you can see inside. Not at all. Inside and outside are the same. How can you only confine yourself to one side? If you are seeing a miracle inside and you're seeing a miracle outside, they are identical. There's no difference. If, if something miraculous is happening in your life outside, how can you consider it less important than seeing a couple of stars inside? Don't, don't make, make that mistake of thinking the only way to judge if you are making spiritual progress is to see what you saw inside in meditation. I told you the story of great master's master, Baba Jamal Singh. I'll repeat it. Just in case you've forgotten, I'll repeat it. Baba Jamal Singh was a disciple of Swamiji's Seth Shivdiyal Singh Ji of Agra, who set up the Radha Swami movement. And he once, he was living in Punjab, and his master was living in Uttar Pradesh, another state in Agra, long distance to travel in those days. But he was missing his master so much that he wrote a letter to Baba Jamal Singh. And he said, Beloved master, I am missing you so much. I want to come and see you. I can't help it. I don't know what's happening. I am missing so much. Please give me a time and date when I can come and see you. And he mailed that letter. There was no other way of communication. No iPhones. No SMS, no, no iMessage, none of those stuff. Letters took a long time in those days. I think they carried by horseback or something, even the letters. After a month, a reply comes to him. My 
beloved son, Jamal Singh. I am very happy to receive your letter and to know that your soul is roaming around in the higher regions. It is going about in Khand Brahmant. Puzzled by this letter, Jamal Singh said, this is not meant for me. Maybe by mistake it has been mailed to my address, meant for some other disciple. So he wrote back. He said, Master, my soul goes nowhere. I am just missing you. I can't help missing you so much. I want to see you right now. Please give me some time so I can come and see you. After a month, another letter comes back to him from Swamiji. He says, Dear son, Jamal Singh, I am very happy to receive your second letter. And I am very happy to know that your soul is roaming around in the higher regions in Khand Brahmand. Now puzzled completely by two letters. Swamiji writes, So far as coming to see me is concerned, you can come in the first week of next month. So Baba Jamal Singh travels to Agra and goes and meets his master, Swamiji, with those two letters in his hand and he presents them to him. Says, Swamiji, you wrote these two letters to me, Master. They don't belong to me. My soul never went anywhere. And you are writing twice that I am roaming around in Khand Brahmand. And Swamiji laughs at him and says, Okay, put the letter aside. Let's go inside for a little while. There were some 10, 15 people sitting there outside. So they both retire into a room inside. After about half an hour, they both come out. And then in the presence of others, Swami Ji says, Jamal Singh, now tell me, when I wrote those letters to you, was your soul going round in Khand Brahman and higher region or not? He says, yes, Master, it was. Swami Ji says, I am not asking you whether your soul went into Khand Brahman today when we went inside the room. I am asking you, was your soul roaming around in Khand Brahman in higher regions when I wrote the letters to you? Yes, Master, it was roaming around at that time. Then Swamiji addressed those people sitting around. He said, it is not always necessary to have a spectacle insight to know what progress you have made. The fact that this son of mine, Baba Jamal Singh, felt so missing so much, expressing love so strongly. Where was that coming from? You cannot have that feeling unless some progress spiritually is being made. Because what is drawing the soul inside to a higher level is the love and devotion you are expressing and the feeling. The feeling that he could express his love by saying he missed so much, he wanted to see his master immediately, showed the soul was making progress inside. Then Swamiji also explained, this is like a putting a bandage on your eyes so that you are not drawn to that spectacle forever. And you are able to do those things which are required to do with your karmic responsibilities here. He explained that we have to do so many things and although we are seekers of the truth and want to move inside, we have karmically created responsibility, karmically created obligations to do a lot of things, taking care of our jobs, our families, children, parents, things like that. We have so many things to do outside. And if all the time we are seeing inner spectacles, we would not be able to do that and come back again to take care of those people. Therefore, it's better that we keep on paying off our karma at the same time make a cent. In order to pay off your karma, very often you have to put attention on those things which a spectacle inside can remove. But this does not mean that you are making no progress. Progress can be measured by many means. This is just one example I've given you that when you feel you miss your master so much, you love him so much, you want to be close to him, you're making progress. When you see little, little miracles in your life, you're making progress. And I'll tell you some other standards. If you are less angry than you used to be, you're making progress. If you're less lustful than you used to be, you're making progress. If you think this world is not yours, not yours, not attached so much, you're making progress. When you feel that 
who are you only master is the doer of all things and you think of it all the time you are making progress these are all signs there are so many other ways to check if you are making spiritual progress or not spiritual progress is being made continuously while these things are happening and how peaceful and calm you are how do you deal with people are you provoked as easily as you used to be all these are signs there are so many ways to judge spiritual progress is change in spiritual life it changes in so many things in your life that's how you can judge but sometime we ask this question and people have asked if we have found a master we have to go to home why does it why does it take so long it should be just now instant we should go instantly back to such kind why are we wasting time here what does the master's point of view say that to that question he says what i am doing for you is like an instant you have been here millions and millions of years you have been lifetime after lifetime and the fact that i am going to take you in a few years in a few a short lifetime is like an instant you know the time is different in in true home the time is very different for example you can have a whole lifetime here which will be an instant there so one lifetime means nothing master's point of view is from a different different level this reminds me of somebody telling me a story about brahma and a disciple of lord brahma the creator the disciple prayed lord is it true that in your domain a thousand years is just a moment brahma said yes dear that is true is it also true that in your domain a million dollars is one cent he said that is true lord will you give me one cent from your domain <laughs> and brahma said wait a moment <laughs> oh no, these are but the whole essence of the story is we cannot always judge from the small time frame we have what we are getting we don't remember our past lives we don't remember anything we are only living in a short span and we are taking that and becoming impatient in that being impatient in a short span of time then we have so much and there are some rules we are designed this is a world of law laws and rules and regulations the mental world these worlds physical astral and causal are mental worlds they are, they, are, they are operate under the laws of the mind cause and effect they are based upon karma this is the kind of world we are in now that's what we are experiencing now so while we are experiencing this world we go according to the rules of this world i can't go and uh, cause a traffic problem and tell the cop no i am on spiritual path <laughs> don't give me a ticket i have to follow the rules of this world similarly in the law of karma we have to follow the laws of karma we are in the law of karma our having a human body our having a presence in the physical world is a result of the law of karma you have no karma you can't be a human being you can't have a body at all it is a karma our actions our own old actions our own intentions are creating a human body and a human life for us that's the law by which we are experiencing this so we have to live within that law Now, if the law requires that we do certain things in response to what we did earlier, and we have to fulfill that, which means paying off our karma, and we say, "No, no, I don't want to pay off our karma. I want to go to home." You can go home, but the law here requires you pay off your karma. Of course, in home you'll find out it was all a game. There was no such thing as karma on your soul. Karma was put up. in the mind to have an experience of this kind of life this kind of experience so therefore when you have to have an obligations and we have so much obligations today more than ever before we don't have that kind of free time we used to have 100 years ago so therefore being so busy with paying of karma we can't say 
let's go and have all the experiences inside visual experiences which distract us and we say karma later and we can do the meditation first you can't postpone if you postpone you come again for second life actually some people tell me after they get initiated the karma pay off of karma speed speeds up which is good we have to pay off something we have come up with an account and we want to finish sanchit karma reserve has been finished already at initiation we just have a small bit of karma of present life alone left now if we create some new karma here we come again for this short short segment that we are creating now but we have to do it so one should never worry about this now never worry that oh i have got so many things to do do it you are paying off your bills you say how you pay our bills that's how you pay off your bills these are all payment of bills old bills that are pending you didn't pay them last time you created new ones and now you pay them off cheerfully pay them off and be ready to go home so that is why you cannot always judge in a busy life what your spiritual progress is and overall progress overall inside and outside so remember that you have to judge always inside and outside if you are making any progress and eventually you will find the more progress you make the more love true love and devotion will come automatically inside you and love and devotion is very powerful thing it's not made up by thinking about it it comes when you're drawn and the more meditation you do the more conversations you have with your master inside love and devotion will grow and your spiritual growth will keep on taking place altering your life outside even if you don't see it so don't always emphasize on this thing i have not had a spectacle inside i could not fly above the sky i could not go there therefore i am not making progress that's not true you can have a limited spectacle and a much more experience of changes in life and more miracles here so that is why they all balanced with each other so do not only judge your spiritual progress from what you can see in the dark sky inside of course it's nice to have inner experiences i am not saying that don't have them i am saying but don't judge your spiritual growth only from that but follow baba jamal singh's example if you are missing your master so much you want to see him as much as you as quickly as you can you want to be there you are making progress when you go inside you will check it out that's what happened with baba jamal singh when swami ji put him into meditation and showed him his state as it was when he wrote the letters he found out he has been traveling in those areas blindfolded he could not see them but he could feel them and the feeling was being expressed in his love and devotion for his master i would like to uh, distribute the prasad today if somebody is only coming tomorrow we'll have some left over for tomorrow but i think uh, we can do it today now yeah i also want to say that people have asked me in passing and i think it's important i should tell you that you tell stories of these bbs you tell stories of dr ishar singh you tell stories of the mastanas of great master days are those days over is it only history that you had those people or are such people even there today and i want to tell you there are as many people here today of the same type as they were at that time i'm sitting amongst us there are as many people here who are having the same kind of experiences the same feelings that these people had at that time and when uh, mark closes his recording i'd like to request uh, uh, a couple of my friends to 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 be introduced to you i'll introduce your couple of friends whose experiences are as amazing as the experiences that these advanced souls the mastanas had in great masters time so don't think that was all history if it, if it was history i can tell you history is being repeated right now in this country right here so don't think it is just stories i tell you they are being repeated right now thank you very much for your patient listening and i hope you all enjoyed this bandara and you will take this prashad home and take 
little bit of it every day as a memory of this event. Thank you. Great Master, blessings be with all of you. God bless you.